today is brought to you by MTG Loot Chess. They're a new Magic the Gathering loot box based product that has multiple different types of boxes for old and new players to the game. I will leave their website and Patreon links in the description down below. Please guys, go check these guys out as they have a really great product and help support the channel. Hey everybody, Sneaky Narcotic, back at it again with another YouTube video. And in today's video, we're going to be going over some more Zendikar Rising spoilers. Our first spoiler of the day is Kabira Plateau. Land, uncommon, Kabira Plateau, enters the battlefield tapped, add a white. Wise adventurers and clever beasties stick to the higher ground, Crack of Sunder Bay. The other side of this card is Kabira Takedown. One generic and a white for an instant uncommon. Kabira Takedown deals damage equal to the number of creatures you control to target creature or planeswalker down belows where things go to die. Crack of Sunder Bay. Um, so the thing about this is I, I still don't feel like these double-sided cards really do much. I don't like that it enters the battlefield tapped. Again, it's an uncommon. Gives you the option for it to be a land but it still feels bad um deals damage equal to the number of creatures you control to target creatures so you have to have creatures to do that but it does target planeswalkers which is good so if you're playing a pretty wide deck then this is probably a good card um i know there's a wide deck in standard right now with knights so this possibly could see a knight um upbeat and with it being a land already you could just put it as part of your 22 lands uh, i run 22 in standard some people run 24 some people run 21 depending on what you're playing but i play 22 basically um and yeah you could play this as one of your lands instead of playing it as one of your what's that number 38 38 Kazul's uh, Cliffs land uncommon. Kazul's Cliffs enter the battlefield tapped. Tap and add a red. The path up the cliffs is nothing but step switchbacks and rickety lifts. Made by elves, maintained by humans, and guarded by ogres. But it's the best way into the heart of Marasa. Samila Marasa Expeditionary House. I love that there's this little... I, I, I like the art on this because that's just this little orc sword is what it kind of looks like. Um, and I just love it. It looks so cool. And then you have Kazul's Fury. Two generic and a red for an instant uncommon. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. Kazul's Fury deals damage equal to the sacrificed creature's power to any target. The wall is steep, but the cliffs are steeper. Samila Marasa's Expeditionary House. So, this is... To any target. This is basically a fling, um, which is kind of cool because we don't have fling in standard right now, but it's been in standard since I've started playing, and it's just cool to see it come back, especially in a land form as well. Um, <sighs> fling decks are fun, but they're not really playable, in my opinion, unless you're taking your opponent's creatures and flinging them back at them, then it's a two for one. And I, I think that's where I would mainly see this Kazul's Fury card. <clears throat> Our next card is Crag Plate Bayloth. Five generic and two green for a creature beast rare. As kicker, two generic and a green. This spell can't be countered. Hexproof and haste. If it was kicked, it enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on it. And it's a six six for seven with hexproof and haste. Um I'm trying to remember the name of the card that was in Dominaria that was like a seven six. Hexproofer, um, and that card just dominated in Dominaria. I know, I'm funny. Um, but it dominated the standard format because it was a monogreen trample card that had Hexproof, and I believe it couldn't be countered. So, really, this card is a lot more than it seems, especially when we also have a Landfall. This card will probably rule the monogreen format, uh, because it's the top end of a Stompy, the only thing it's missing is Trample, and there's ways to give it Trample in Standard right now. So, I really think that this is going to be a good card, really sought after card. Probably, I wanted to give a price on it, at least a $15 card, because Monogreen Stompy is always in Standard. It always is. So, just keep your eyes out on this uh, 
Crags Plate Bailoff. Inscription of Ruin, two generic and a black for a sorcery rare kicker, two generic and two black. Choose one if that spell was, if this spell was kicked, choose any number instead. Target opponent discards two cards. Return target creature with converted mana cost two or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. Destroy target creature with converted mana cost three or less. So, <clears throat> I want to say you can stagger those. However you want to do it first, like whichever one of the modes you want to do first, if you choose to do more than one. For three mana, destroying target creature with converted mana cost two or less. Returning target creature card with converted mana cost two or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. Yours or your opponent's. Um, and then just making somebody generically discard two cards is pretty good. <coughs> so this probably will end up in a discard deck. Um, there's a couple of them out there right now. It will be a little less uh, once we take Demir out with the Ravnica cycling out. Uh, but I do think that this will go in there. And it supports the idea of making your opponent discard things and then bringing those things back. Which is one of my, one of my personal favorite things to do, uh, honestly, is, is to make them watch their good cards go to the graveyard. And then mm, taking that good card. Granted, the good card has to have... 2 CMC or less in this situation, but still. Shatter Skull the Hammer Pass. Land Mythic Rare. As Shatter Skull the Hammer Pass enters the battlefield, you may pay 3 life. If you don't, it enters the battlefield tapped. And then you tap it and add red. The safest way across the sky of things is to fly. Shatter Skull Pass is a pretty distant second. It's a Mila Marasa Expeditionary House. The other side of this card is Shatter Skull Smashing. It's an X cost, 2 red, mana, sorcery, mythic rare. Shatter Skull Smashing deals X damage to as you choose among up to 2 target creatures and or planeswalkers. If X is 6 or more, Shatter Skull deals twice X damage divided as you choose among them instead. So, <coughs> this card is one of those, um... It's one of those cards that seems like it would be good. I mean, it's a mythic rare. But my issue with the left side of this is you have to pay three life for it to enter the battlefield untapped, which is stupid. I um, mean, we have Shocklands and... Well, I guess we're about to have Shocklands go out of standard. But we did have Shocklands in standard for a second there. And for them to take out the Shocklands and then give us this farce is kind of bad, in my opinion. Uh... Because Mono Red exists, and Mono Red will kill you like this. The other thing is Shatter Skull Smashing does not deal damage to your opponent. It just does it to their creatures and or planeswalkers. And I don't appreciate that. That's um, it's targeted removal for a lot of mana. A lot of mana, mind you. And I uh, just don't see that being a good card. Attended Healer. Three generic and a white for a creature core cleric uncommon. Whenever you gain life for the first time each turn, create a 1 1 white cat creature token. Three generic and a white, another target cleric gains lifelink until end of turn, and it is a 2 3. My cats have taught me more about the sacred than anything in some old ruins. So. I like Attended Healer. It, um, the, if you haven't seen my other videos, please go check them out. Please like, subscribe, and do all that other usual YouTube stuff. But in the other spoiler videos, I talk about the Cleric Tribal that's happening in Standard with this set. And how it's just going to get better. Because they keep adding these good Cleric cards. They all work pretty well with each other. Um, but with the Cleric Lord, and not, not necessarily Lord as in gives plus one, plus one to all other clerics, but Lord as in he's kind of like the legendary creature that rules them all. Um, it makes it to where clerics are this kind of like reoccurring lifelink in your face deck that's just super good. Um, I don't see the other tribals of the party system, because the party system is warrior, wizard, rogue, and cleric i don't see the other tribals really getting the much support as clerics have so i do think that cleric is going to be a fantastic standard uh deck 
So that and I just like this card in general for being able to give you tokens for gaining life. And life is so super easy to gain. Uh, I want to say, I'm probably wrong when I say this. I want to say the gain one life um, lands are still going to be in the standard. The dual gain one life lands. With shock lands coming out, those could be very useful. But then again, I'm not too sure because I want to say those were from the core set from last summer, 2019. And I want to say that is also cycling out. I want to say everything but Throne of Eldrain, but I'm not certain. I really need to check this uh, cycle. Merfolk Falconer. Three generic and two blue mana for a creature Merfolk Wizard Uncommon. Flying. Whenever you kick, uh, you cast a kicked spell, scry to. For generations, we have bred and trained falcons for expeditions into Amiria. Now more sky runes open themselves to those with the means to reach the heights. And it is a 4-4 four, four for 5 of flying. I... Don't really think this card is gonna be good. I wouldn't really pay attention to it. It scries you some cards when you pay a bunch of mana for a kicker spell. So, no, not good. Thieving Skydiver, one generic and one blue creature, Merfolk Wizard or Merfolk Rogue, and it is a rare kicker is X. X can't be zero. Flying when Thieving Skydiver enters the battlefield, if it was kicked. Gain control of target artifact with converted mana cost X or less. If that artifact is an equipment, attach it to Thieving Skydiver and it is a 2-1. I... I like this card. I do. Because I feel like there's going to be also a subset of a art of equipments coming with this set. Um, I've seen a couple already. And I think the equipment tribal might be a thing. But also, it doesn't just pertain only to equipments. You can still... Artifacts, you can still, um, I'm trying to think of some good artifacts in Standard. In in Commander, you can still Soul Ring, you can still, uh, that new, that new Soul Ring from Throne of Eldraine that I just, I can never remember. It's the, um, one that taps for two different color meadows. But yeah, so there's some artifacts out there that are worth, worth it to still in Standard right now. I, yeah, I think so. Anyways. Iridescent Horn Beetle. Four generic and a green for a creature insect uncommon. At the beginning of your instep, create a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token for each plus one plus one counter you're, you've put on creatures you roll this turn. The hatchlings will fill the jungles of Marasa in a glittering tide in its a four. Now, if the plus one plus one counter deck goes on and actually is good enough this will be a good top end for it because it will just keep breeding you these one one green insect creatures uh i wish it happened when you put a plus one plus one counter on them for each time you put a plus one plus one counter on them it still does it for each time but you have to let this card survive till your end step and that's the that's the issue because then your opponent's like okay well let me wait until after your second main at the end of your second main let me kill your horn beetle oh well you didn't get the payoff so it's it's a nah, it's eh. It's not uncommon, is what it is. Corrigan Intimidator. It almost looks like uh Oh man. I've really forgotten. So uh, nope, nope, nope. Sarkon. Yeah, Sarkon. Cargan Intimidator. One generic and a red for a creature human warrior rare. Cowards can't block warriors. One generic, choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn. Cargan Intimidator gets plus one plus one until end of turn. Target creature becomes a coward until end of turn, and target warrior gains trample until end of turn. He is a 3 1. So, the issue, of course, with him is that he's a 3 1 for two mana. Uh, I'd rather him be a 1 3 than a 3 1, but it's in red, and they don't make those in red too often. So, the issue with this card is that it's going to be extremely good for mono red because he basically makes one target creature a uh, can't block and when you're making their big creature not be able to block all your little small red creatures it feels bad uh and then being able to give your creatures trample kind of synergizes with making this in gruel 
and I don't know if there's really a gruel and standard at the moment, but it may be after the cycle there will be, and Cargan and Intimidator will definitely find a great spot for that. Murag, Fury of Akum, four generic and two red mana for a legendary creature, Minotaur Warrior, Mythic Rare. Each creature you control gets Fire Breathing, plus one, plus zero, for each time it has attacked this turn. Oh, okay. Landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, if it's your main phase, there's an additional combat phase after this Excuse me, after this phase, at the beginning of that combat, untap all creatures you control, six, six. So, the problem with this card is I don't think it reads that every single time you put a land down, there's a yet another combat phase. I think it's only really that there will be two. Uh, if it's your main phase, there's an additional combat phase after this phase. Yeah, I just, I just think that there's only two combat phases if you do that. So, maybe. It does say additional combat phase. I would need a judge ruling on that. And I'm, I'm not a judge, but I honestly... I'm also not an English teacher, and that's the real issue here is that if it says an additional combat phase after this phase, does it keep adding one after this phase until you're done with your, all your landfalls? Um, which, if it does, that's super good. That's really good. And then on top of that, each creature gets fire breathing per attack. So they attack, they untap, they attack, they untap. And you see, they just get bigger and bigger in the front. So that's that's really good. This card could be potentially busted. Um, possibly a bannable card, depending. So, yeah. I, I'll just need a judge rule on that card. Seagate Reborn is a land mythic rare. As Seagate Reborn enters the battlefield, you may pay three life. If you don't, it enters the battlefield tapped. It taps for a blue. We carry on the legacy of those who defended our world by continuing to unearth its secrets, and that is Tosri. Or generic and three blue mana for the sorcery Seagate Restoration. It's a sorcery. It's a mythic rare. Draw cards equal to the number of cards in your hand plus one. You have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. We have much to remember and much we can never forget, Osri. So, the only really good thing about Seagate Restoration and Seagate Reborn is that it obviously gives you options, but that it gives you that no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. It doesn't really pertain to standard because there's no, in at the moment, limiting your hand size factors in standard like I uh, like Jinja Taxes. The number one one I, I can always think of is Jinja Taxes. Um, but in Commander, this card might actually be sought after because it could potentially draw you a lot of cards, but it also could give you that no maximum hand size, and that could be a thing really useful just to set up for the rest of the game. Uh, so yeah, they just keep an eye out for this card. I feel like. Obviously, up front, it doesn't look that great, but in the end, I do think this card's going to be worth it. So, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Litho Foreign Blight. One generic and a black for an enchantment or an uncommon enchant land. When a Litho Foreign Blight enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted land loses all land types and abilities and has tap, add a waste, and tap, pay one life, add one mana of any color. Needless, excuse me, heedless of Nissa's warnings, Nahiri repeated history. So, here is the funny part about this card. It basically can tell a dual land to go suck it. Uh, but at the same time, it also could add one mana of any color in Luju Life. So, you might actually want to use this on your own land. Uh, I'm trying to think of the actual land that does that. Taps for a waste, or you can pay one life and it taps for an actual... Excuse me. Taps for an actual mana. Um, but I can't think of it. So, really, this card is more... Probably towards using it on yourself, and I can see that being kind of good, as well as drawing you a card. Phylath, World Sculptor. For generic and a red and a green for a legendary creature elemental, it's a rare. When Pylath 
World Sculptor enters the battlefield. Create a 0-1 green plant token for each basic land you control. Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put four plus one plus one counters on target plant you control, and it is itself a 5-5. Five, five. Now, obviously in standard, you're going to probably use more basic land. And commander, sometimes you will do the same thing. As far as this card, I wish that it was a monocolored because it would make more sense. Uh, you would have more basic lands in a monocolored deck than you would in a two-colored deck. Now, the whole thing about putting four plus one plus one counters when a target plant you control, that's kind of eh, but at the same time, could be really worth it. Uh, right now, we still have Wilderness... R no, damn it. Evolving Wilds. I can never remember that card's name. Evolving Wilds. And we have Fabled Passage. And so both of those cards together will cause a double landfall effect because you sacrifice them to put another land down. Uh, so in the same turn, they could landfall twice and that can make two of your plants really worth having. Low Mage is familiar. One generic and a green and a blue. Creature, beast, uncommon, tap it, add green or blue. Whenever you cast a kick spell, you gain two life. They store energy in special gastric organs, but I guess you'd probably rather have me clear the path than rubble about guts. Bahar Expeditionary Wizard, and it is a 2-4 for 3 mana that is a mana dork of green or blue. So, I don't know if this will for real see play. I guess if you're playing a kicker deck, this could uh, obviously gives you the mana to be able to kick. But also, I just have a thing about a 3 CMC um, mana dork, so probably won't see it in my standard. Cinderclasm. One generic and a red for an instant uncommon. Kicker red. Cinderclasm deals 1 damage to each creature. If it was kicked, it deals 2 damage to each creature instead. Every Inferno begins with a spark. This is actually a playable card, <laughs> believe it or not. Because most tokens are going to be 2. So for 3 mana, you're clearing the board of 2 damage. And in fact, it reminds me of Cry of the Carnarium, which is about to get cycled out. Uh, which did this, but it exiled all creatures that died this turn. So... I really think this card will see play just based off of that and some red, not probably mono red, but some red colored deck that plays control. So we'll see. At least in the sideboard you would have to imagine. Alright, Magmatic Channeler. One generic and a red for a creature human wizard rare. As long as there are four or more instants and or sorcery cards in your graveyard, Magmatic Channeler gets plus three, plus one, making it a four, four for two mana. Tap it, discard a card, exile the top two cards for, of your library, then choose one of them. You may play the card this turn. This possibly could see play in mono red just for that second ability, discarding a card as a top two. That basically gets you an extra draw per turn, as well be as being one of those very rare legendary one threes uh in red. So possibly possibly could see play. Leyline Tyrant, two generic and two red mana for a creature dragon mythic rare. It has flying. You don't lose unspent red mana as steps and phases end. When Leyline Tyrant dies, you may pay any amount of red. When you do, it deals that much damage to any target, and it is a 4-4. Four, four. This card is extremely good. It is so super, 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 super good. Um, It's going to be in standard, probably. It, but in definitely commander, this card will see play... Because there's been a card in green that did the almost exact same thing, uh, except for I think it was generic mana. It was. Uh, it turned into generic mana once the phase ended, and then you wouldn't be able to lose your generic mana. Now, that being said, I really, really hope they don't ban this card, because 
I feel like there was a card that did something similar, and uh, it got banned from Commander. I don't want to say it out loud because then I have a chance of being wrong. But I, I can think of the name right now and it's on the tip of my tongue. Anyways, let's move on. Luminarch Aspirant. One generic and a white for a creature, human cleric, rare. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control and it is a one one. Meaning that you probably will make it a two two on your first turn. Now, with the plus one plus one counter tribal that they're trying to make, which probably should not be good, this could obviously be a key piece to that deck. My issue again is you give your plus one plus one, or you, you target a creature to give a plus one plus one counter to, let's say it's not even Luminarch Aspirant, it was a, a uh, different creature. You then have an issue where your creature could get destroyed and then your plus one plus one counter didn't go on any creature it fizzled and uh you don't get anything you you don't get a creature bigger you lose a creature and you basically tell your your opponent hey target this creature so i just that's the reason i don't like plus one plus one counters especially like this uh especially with this being in the wrong color normally it's in green and blue so yeah Shadow Stinger. Two generic in a black for a creature vampire rogue uncommon. Tap another untapped rogue you control. Shadow Stinger gains death touch until end of turn. When Shadow Stinger does combat damage to a player, that player mills three cards and it's a 1 4. Definitely playable. I see it being playable, possibly making rogues good enough. Probably not. But possibly making rogues good enough. So, maybe. We'll see. Turn Timber Serpent Serpentine Wood. <laughs> As Turn Timber Serpentine Wood enters the battlefield, you may pay three generic or th excuse me, three life. If you don't, it enters the battlefield. Tap, add green. Turn Timber Symbi Symbiosis. Four generic and three green mana for a sorcery mythic rare. Look at the top seven cards of your library. You may put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield. If that card has converted man, costs three or less. Enters with three additional plus one plus one counters on it. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. And I, I'm having an issue with these mythic rare uh, double sided cards. First off, the land side's kind of butt. Being able or having the ability to and having the want to most of the time. To pay three life for an untapped um, land is terrible. But on the other side, you have a terrible sorcery so i just i don't like it um i feel like it limits you too much like it would make it would make more sense to be a what is that seven mana green tutor um other than being like a seven mana let's go grab something off the top seven cards of your library and put it down and then if it's small enough we'll give it some plus one plus one counters so just Eh, just don't see it. Skyclave Pickaxe. One green mana for an artifact equipment uncommon. When Skyclave Pickaxe enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, equipped creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Its equip cost is two generic and a green. So, a pickaxe that uh, every time a land enters your battlefield gives you plus two, plus two to that creature. Not bad for one green mana that's instantly attached to a target creature. But I still don't know if it's worth it. Um, these equipments are kind of weird, this set. I really wish they would have been more straightforward. But this is one of the ones that might be worth it. Might. Veteran Adventurer, 5 generic and a green for a creature human uncommon. Veteran Adventurer is also a cleric, rogue, warrior, and wizard. Really good. Really, really good. <laughs> this spell costs 1 generic less to cast for each creature in your party. And it's Vigilant. And it's a 5-5. Five, five. How can I be of assistance? It's 5 mana and a green. So it can be discounted down all the way to 2 mana. Which is really good because there's an elf that I want to say is a two drop that can be uh, that can be a 
cleric rogue warrior and wizard and i just i love that i love that they did this with another card that means you do four of these and four of that and then probably four of that black spell that i ranted about i want to say in the last part um again if you didn't see it please go check it out but yeah this these cards are gonna be good these cards are gonna be pretty dope Consecrated defense, or concerted defense. One blue mana, a counter target non-creature spell, unless his controller pays one plus an additional one for each creature in your party. Mmm, that sounds good. You mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. So, I like it because there, it already, it's basically a syncopate. Syncopate was played a lot, but it's a one mana syncopate. That can be discarded. Uh, that can be added on to. So, I kind of like this card. I kind of do. Scourge of the Sky Claves. One generic and a black for a creature demon mythic rare. Add, uh, excuse me, four generic and a black for its kicker cost. When you cast the spell, if it was kicked, each player loses half their life rounded up. Scourge of the Sky Claves power and toughness are equal to 20 minus the highest life total amongst players. So the really cool part about this, the really cool part about this is uh, if you're playing mono black aggro, this card is really good. If you're trying to play any aggro, this card's really good. If you're playing the long game, this card could be really, really good. I... Uh, it reminds me of Torgar with its little ability. Basically, uh, Torgar did half your life total, but uh, or made a uh, target player's life total equal to half its starting life total. And this card says, "Go ahead and just, just everybody, let's let's lose half our life total." So, <laughs> um, this does affect you, and you do have to keep that in mind. This is a demon of all things, but. It could be really good. The other third thing, just for fun, there are some games that will say, I, uh, you can go into negative life <laughs> if you have some. Let's say, what is that card? Uh, Platinum Angel. Um, shoot, some other cards even say that. But anyway, so if you go into negative life, this creature gets twenty minus the highest life total amongst players. If the highest life total is a minus. Uh, is a negative number, then it actually gets 20 plus that number. So, <laughs> I just love that there's math in this game. And <laughs> that you can actually have like a 30-30 demon. But at that point in time, you really don't care that you have a 30-30 demon, you know? <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> Moss Pit Skeleton. One black, one green for a creature plant. Skeleton. It's an uncommon kicker, three generic. If Moss Pit Skeleton was kicked, it enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it for a five five. Whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on a creature you control, if Moss Pit Skeleton is in your graveyard, you may put Moss Pit Skeleton on top of your library. And it's a two two. That could be possibly a five five. <coughs> So, um, I like that it's on par. It's a 2-2 two -two for 2, or it's a 5-5 five -five for 5. Uh, it has a recursion, which is good. It makes sense. It's a skeleton. Skeletons reassemble a lot. But my issue is that it's still part of that plus 1, plus 1 tribal. And then, I feel like it's in different colors than the plus 1, plus 1 cards we've seen already today. I don't feel like there was any black plus 1, plus 1 cards. So, I feel like they're diversifying it too much into other colors, and that's just dumb to me. Especially when you're going to take Proliferate out. Journey to Oblivion. For generic and a white, for an enchantment uncommon, this spell costs one less to cast for each creature in your party. When Journey to Oblivion enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Journey of Oblivion leaves the battlefield. So it's basically stasis snare uh, that can be discounted all the way down to one white mana. <clears throat> On average, this card is going to cost you three mana, uh, which is eh, not really that great. Canyon Jerboa. Jerboa. Two generic and a white for a creature mouse uncommon. When a land enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn, and it's a one, two. So, 
this card is probably going to be in like some type of Boros or Mono Red, excuse me, Mono White. Um, aggro deck. That's what I would put it. And just use that landfall ability as much as I could. Again, Evolving Wilds, Fable Passage, all sorts of good things. Forsaken Monument. I want to say this is a reprint, but I'm not sure. Five generic for a legendary artifact. Mythic rare. Colorless creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Whenever you tap a permanent for waste, add an additional waste. Whenever you cast a colorless spell, you gain two life. We shall forever roam. Ailee, uh, uh, High Priest of the Eternal Pilgrims. So, this card for five mana, uh, it doesn't, doesn't draw you a card, but it does give your colorless creatures plus two, plus two. So, if you're playing an artifact, let's say an artifact Tron deck, because that has been the standard recently, um, probably going away with the, uh, cycle out of Nyssa, who shakes the world, but... Let's say it anyways. You're playing a colorless Tron deck, and you're just able to all of a sudden have this down creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and then you keep on playing these colorless artifact spells, gaining two life. So, probably worth it. Probably worth it. I don't know about that tap a permanent for a waste, add an additional waste. Uh, but maybe. Maybe. More in standard, probably. Wayward Guide Beast for a red mana creature beast rare has trample and haste. Whenever Wayward Guide Beast deals combat damage to a player, return the land you control to its owner's hand. It's a 2 2. So I don't think this will see play either because it's not a may, it's a you have to. And that's just dub. So nope. Nahiri's Lithoforming. X mana in two red for a sorcery rare sacrifice X lands for each land sacrifice this way draw a card you may play X additional lands this turn lands you control enter the battlefield tapped this turn so it's kind of like scape shift to me except for you draw cards instead of going and getting some more from your deck uh, but it does let you play those X additional lands so Oh, if you... Jeez, guys, I really don't know how to judge this. I would hope that you're doing this in a little handfall deck, and this is your gambit. This is your probably bomb trying to get your landfalls all to go off in the same turn. But, jeez, this seems like a lot of a lot of mana and a lot of effort to do landfall. So, I don't know how to judge this card. Akiri, Fearless Voyager. One generic and a red and a white for a legendary creature. Core Warrior. It's a rare. Whenever you attack a player with one or more equipped creatures, draw a card. Pay one might, white mana. Might mana. You may unattach an equipment from a creature you control. If you do, tap that creature and it gains indestructible until end of turn. No angel bars are a sit. A mirror waits above. And it is a 3-3. Three, three. So, this card's going to be really good for an equipment uh, tribal, obviously. There's, uh, I want to say one in Commander that it will be worth a darn. And this honestly could be the new Commander for it. So, yeah, I think this card could be possibly good. Possibly. Lithoform Engine. For generic for a legendary artifact, Mythic Rare. It has two generic and tap it. Copy target artifact. Uh, excuse me, Co copy target activated or triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. Three generic and tap it. Copy target instant of sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. Four generic and tap it. Copy target permanent spell you control. So <laughs> that's pretty good because that's uh, you're copying target permanent spell you control is pretty good. Pretty good. Um, the number one thing I really think this will good with is copying target activator triggered abilities control not necessarily in standard but in commander that happens a lot and so <laughs> doing that uh, additional time is really good for instance i have oloro oloro has basically an eminence um that allows him to gain two life uh every single upkeep 
at Paradox Engine, which lets me do that, uh, have two upkeeps. So I can copy target artifact or triggered ability I control and choose new targets for the copy, and it doesn't matter about that, but that's a triggered ability, so I don't have to just have Paradox Engine out there to gain four life per turn. I can just pay two generic more mana and copy that ability on my upkeep. And that's just one of the dumb ones, okay? <laughs> you can also bring up Kinrith, and he has activated abilities that you can copy for two generic. Skyclave Relic, three generic mana for an artifact rare, kicker three generic, indestructible. When Skyclave Relic enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, create two tap tokens that are copies of Skyclave Relic. Tap it, add one mana of any color. So, for three mana, you have a mana rock that makes one mana of any color. For six mana, you have three of the same relic. So, that's pretty good. Uh, probably we'll be playing commander but maybe even in standard two and it's indestructible which is another good thing. inscription of insight three generic and a blue for a sorcery rare kicker two generic and two blue choose one if this spell was kicked choose any number instead return up to two target creatures to their owner's hand try to then draw two cards and then the last mode being target player creates an XX blue illusion creature token where X is the number of cards in their hand. Really? This card is going to see a lot of play for a, another similar card that was in standard. Uh, it's probably been two years. Um, the card was called uh, Glimmer of Genius. And I think it was for four mana. Uh, I scried two, drew two, and gave you two energy, which energy mattered to that set. So. That card was seen a lot of play. I would think this card will see a lot of play. Scry 2, draw 2. And then as well as having the ability for 4 more mana to do all those modes is pretty good. So yeah, probably this insight is going to be good. This inscription insight. Maddening Cacophony? Cacophony? I don't even know how to say that. One generic and a blue for a sorcery rare. Kicker, three generic and a blue. Each opponent mills eight cards. Eight, eight, eight cards. If that spell was kicked, instead each opponent mills half, half, have half, half their library. Round it up. Now, obviously at a certain point, it would be better to cast it for two mana than six. But, um, it's still eight cards for two mana. In a set that we already have Turbo Mill in. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty good. So, guys, watch out for this card. It is a really good card. I uh, just want to let you know. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, the translations. On the left, Hagrabite, instant. If any opponent, uh, for two generic and two black mana, if any opponent controls no basic land, the spell costs one less to cast a surely target creature not that great the other side hagra pit enters the battlefield tapped and taps for a black again the whole thing about these double-sided cards is they they want to give you the option to have a land if you need it and i just don't feel like that's worth it and it could be it could be uh it's something i didn't mention earlier is in commander we still have this uh Crucible of Worlds, which is a relic that lets you play lands from your graveyard. So you can play the left side and then play the right side from your graveyard. Um, and I think that might make these double-sided cards worth it. I'll have to run that by my friend and think what he thinks about that. Uh, he plays more of the kind of Crucible of World decks than I do. But uh, I just don't know. I really don't know about this card or these double-sided cards in general. But four mana for a instant... Kill a creature spell just seems stupid. Marasa's Sprout Lead. Creature, plant, elemental, kicker, one generic and a green. The original cost is two generic and a green. When Marasa's Sprout Lead enters a battlefield, if it was kicked, return target creature card with kicker from your graveyard to your hand. The seeds of memory grow eternal. Um... Yeah, you know, three mana for three three is kind of on par. Plant elemental might be worth mentioning. Um, but for five mana, you can return a creature card that has kicker on it from your graveyard to your hand. 
recursion is kind of good, so probably we'll see a place somewhere. Somewhere. Gerari Perturbation. It's an instant uh, counter target creature or target spell unless its controller pays one generic. Uh, the other side is Gerari's Ruins. It's a land. Gerari Ruins enters the battlefield tapped. Tap it, add blue to your mana pool. Um, so the first side, which is the one generic and a blue instant, I don't know. There's been similar cards in standard, and sometimes you can get it off to where they don't have any mana to pay. So yeah, you countered the target spell. Ha ha ha. But sometimes they just have that mana to pay. So I really don't know. It will kind of set a standard. I uh, for people to start playing their cards and having one mana open. And that would be at least decent for yes. I don't know. Maybe sideboardable. Uh Skyclave Loot is a sorcery. Look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of creatures that make up your party plus three. Any three cards from your library to your hand, or excuse me, add three cards from your library. To, there's probably a weird translation on this. Uh, to your hand and shuffle the rest into your library. So, for five mana, you can basically draw the top three cards of your library, or for if you have any members in your party, you can look at the top three plus more. So, I don't really, I don't really see five mana draw three cards going to be plausible and standard. So, I'm gonna say no to this card. Malakir's Rebirth is a one black mana instant choose target creature you lose to life. Until end of turn, that creature gains when this creature dies to so return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. Uh, it's an instant, so that's pretty good, but you also lose two life to get your creature back. So, uh, I don't know. Malakir's Mind, of course, is a tap land that taps for black. So, this card out of the dual-sided uh, cards I feel would be the most playable that I've seen today. Um... And yes, that's including those mythic rares. Just because it gives you the option to not necessarily give your creature hexproof, but give your creature recursion. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Salundi's Vision is a two generic and a blue for an instant. Look at the top six cards of your library. You may reveal an instant or sorcery card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. Six cards, that's pretty good for three mana, but it's still, you can choose one card out of six or three mana. So I don't like that. Uh, of course, the other side is a tap land that taps for blue. Um, So out of the tap lands and DSCs, other than the last one I just showed you, this might be the second playable just because it's, it's choice. That's the only reason. And there's some instances in standard that you can copy this and possibly do this twice in a row and that might be worth it for three mana so maybe skyclave shadow cat creature cat horror nice one generic in a black for sacrifice another creature put a plus one plus one counter on skyclave shadow cat whenever a creature you control dies with a plus one plus one counter on it uh, draw a card. So, this would synergize well with Liliana of the Dreadhorde, except for it's getting cycled out. Um, the other part of this is it reminds me of a card that was in standard again a long, long time ago called Nantuko Husk. It was one of my other friends who quit magic. Uh, one of his favorite cards ever. And if you're watching this, Clay, yes, I'm talking about you. So, Nantuko Husk, um, let you do this without paying mana and that was the only reason it was a good card uh, I don't even remember if it was giving a plus one plus one counter or if it gave just plus one plus one But what he would do is he would steal your his opponent's creature with a spell like uh, Treason, you know treachery or betrayal any of these certain red cards um, Still the firstborn my favorite red card 
<laughs> Anyways, and then he would sacrifice it to his Nantuko Husk. Well, to do that with this card, you still have to add uh, two mana, one of them being black. So I just don't like that um, on top of it being a four drop. So probably won't see play. That's the last of, this, of the um, spoilers today, guys. If you made it this far, let me just thank you all for watching. Uh, enjoying my new subscribers. Uh, my new views. Thank y'all for watching. Um, and please, please, please join us for the next video.